Hi, this is Andrew Klein. Um, today's video is going to take a look at a new feature in ZBrush 4 R2 uh, that uh, I just think is incredibly awesome and hopefully you can find some use for. Uh, what I have here is a t-shirt model, um, the base model uh, down at level 1 looks like this. Uh, the sculpt that I've applied so far, kind of giving uh, secondary detail, has just sort of created uh, fabric wrinkles along the bottom. And what I want to do with today's demo is I want to try and describe the type of fabric that's on the surface using a new noise feature that is uh, now available in 4.2. So um, one other thing that I should mention about this is that this um, object has already been UV'd. Uh, if I make a new texture from UV check here, uh, you'll be able to see the UV unwrap of this. Um, unwrapped pretty standardly, there is um, pretty much one continuous shell with separate cell shells for the sleeves and a very minimal amount of distortion. Uh, to do the technique that we're about to do, this works best if your object has already been UV'd. So uh, that's what we have here first. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, in my tool palette, uh, about halfway down, I'm going to open up the surface rollout. And it used to be here that we just had noise uh, attributes to create things like rust and rocks and surface details like that. But they've really beefed up the noise attributes in ZBrush 4 R2. To um, edit this, uh, I'm now just going to turn on noise, which is very similar to what we had before. Except now when I turn on noise, I get this whole menu which pops up, which has a lot of interactive options. And here you can even see a preview of uh, the shirt as I go. Well, a couple things about this, you know, if I turn up the strength of my noise uh, and the scaling of my noise and adjust my noise curve, you know, these functionality elements are pretty much similar to what we had experienced in previous versions of ZBrush to create rust and rocks and things like that. Um, so let me just reset these values out here. Um, what I'm going to do now, though, is I'm going to bring in some um, external noise uh, images, uh, in this case, fabric images, that I'm going to be able to use to apply uniformly across this whole surface, which is going to save so much time as opposed to using drag rectangle stroke or trying to use uh, inflates or trying to use uh, uh, stencils or any other techniques that we previously used to get fabric onto uh, clothing like this. So in the Noisemaker uh, preview, uh, you'll see a little dot uh, here at the bottom of this uh, interface, a little dot. And what you have to do is you have to click on that dot, which kind of opens up the external uh, Finder browser. Uh, here I'm going to choose an image called fabric.jpg from my own texture library and just say open. So this is a tiling uh, black and white image uh, and shades of gray. And uh, when I bring it in, you're not going to see anything happen here. Uh, this is partially because the scale and the strength haven't been set yet. Now I'm going to adjust the strength value to a point at which you can see this and uh, all of a sudden you'll see that fabric pattern apply to the shirt. So one of the problems of this though is you're going to notice that there is uh, some streaking here maybe along the side if you can see that. Uh, if I apply this on, and let me just say OK so you can see this, I can edit it in a second. If I say OK here, uh, you're going to notice some streaking along the whole edge of the shirt, and that's something we want to try and avoid. Uh, I'm going to hit Edit again under the Surface Palette to reopen up this menu. And um, this streakiness is caused by the fact that this is being generated by the 3D Preview Mode. I'm instead going to switch to the UV Preview Mode. Uh, so it's not projecting it in 3D, it's really projecting it through the UVs. Uh, and now I'm going to have something that matches up and has less distortion because my UVs are unflattened really nicely. Uh, I do have to, however, change the scale of this because you'll notice that my scale is way too big. I'm going to turn the scale down uh, and also just adjust the strength up a little bit here. And uh, I still have access to any of the sliders that I could have used before, such as my scaling values, if you want to like flatten this off a bit using focal shift and offset. Uh, I'm just going to say OK, and moments later I have a pretty nice seamless application of this fabric pattern onto my shirt as a tertiary level detail. 
Um, but this actually gets one step cooler because you can also use this coupled with poly painting, uh, and that's this feature here called color blend. Uh, let's say I want my shirt to be blue. Uh, I can turn on color blend and setting my color and then setting the amount of color blend, I could determine how much blue actually gets applied to this based on the height of that alpha. So if I paint bucketed a you know, pretty dark blue onto my model first, going to color and saying fill object with that blue, I can then probably come in and drop this color right on top of it, blend the two right together. And I have the ability to kind of shift to the highs and the lows, depending on which side of this I go to. So anyway, I will just uh, sort of set that as is here. Uh, again, my noise curve is really going to control a lot of that blending as well. And uh, you're going to see I can get a pretty much blue shirt right there. I'm going to turn off color blend, though, just to take a look at this. And uh, go back, refill my object with white. There we go. Now, again, this is still not completely applied to the mesh yet. To uh, do this, uh, I have to actually bake this in using noise apply to mesh. So once I've got my scale and everything the way I would like it, uh, and I have enough geometry to support this, I have 2 million polygons right now, uh, I can just say surface apply to mesh. And this will actually bake it into the polygon structure as we see here. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed this uh, feature as well as uh, several of the other new features in ZBrush 4.2.